Hello, Hello Australia. Australia. And welcome to another episode of Life Support. The only home improvement show that improves you as well as your home. So sit back and let us tell you the right way to go about it. I'm Dr Riddy. I've got several medical degrees and a diversified portfolio. So I've got lots of advice for all you average Aussies out there. Remember, every Australian who wants to work deserves to be healthy and rich. I'm Todd. I'm good with tools, tucker and ladies. Later on, I'm going to show you how a do-it-yourself job can benefit the lives of the less fortunate. I'm Sigourney. I'm here for you modern women and for those of you who are trying to be. Tonight, I'm going to show you a must-have accessory for every suburban home. And I'm Penny. I'm going to show you how to live your life on the edge without cutting yourself. So tonight, I'm going to show you how old people don't just have to be a pain in the ass. Jeez, we've got a lot to get through tonight. So let's get to it. Like, you probably don't know it, but council cleanups are an insane place to find all sorts of things that you can use in your own home. Like this cardboard box. Can you believe that somebody actually left this out? It looks brand new. And that can only mean that inside this house is a new widescreen TV. <laughs> By keeping your eyes open, you can take the guesswork out of home invasion. And only hit on houses you know have something to offer. It's like I always say, a rich person's trash is a poor person's treasure map. How's it? That's right, it's Dr. Rudy here with some practical advice for prudent parents. Have you been blessed with a gifted child? Well, the problem with having a gifted child, like young Ahmet here, is that they figure out things so quickly. All these toys have lost their appeal because little Ahmet has solved them all. Now he's bored. Well, here's a little plaything that will keep him absorbed for hours on end. Simply invest in one of these extra small straight jackets for your child. He'll have hours and hours of fun trying to solve this puzzle. Just leave him in his room and let him go to it. Sounds like he's figured out that you have to dislocate a shoulder to get out of it. The little genius. Bye now. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Weren't the Olympics fabulous? Australia attracted visitors from all over the world. And who didn't dream of billeting the Italian men's diving team? The problem is that some of our visitors were never invited in the first place and once here, they just won't go home. We call these people refugees. Let's face it, refugees aren't going to go away, but you can help by opening your heart and arms and being the first in your crescent to billet your very own family of refugees. Now, as sympathetic as we are to the plight of these people, we don't want them traipsing through the house. So Todd is going to show us how to build refugee accommodation in our very own backyard. Thanks Sigourney. Now, billeting your own refugees is a great idea. They're a great help around the house and there's someone for the kiddies to play with. But you'll need somewhere to keep them. Ever since the big brains at local council banned chooks in the backyard, there's been no use for these until now. I'm going to turn this old chook run into a viable compound to house your refugees. All right, let's get stuck in. The first thing you have to do is make sure the fencing posts of your enclosure are nice and sturdy. Even boat-starved refugees will be a little feistier than chickens. Here's a green tip from Todd. This corrugated iron roof, salvaged from the old chook run, can be recycled and used as a new roof to shelter your compound. Next up, wrap some wire fencing around the compound. Something strong with a nice open weave that'll let them enjoy the view. Now, if your chook run was built properly, the wire should go about two feet beneath the ground. This is to stop the foxes digging their way in. Make sure it's still there, because the last thing you want is civil libertarians getting in. Then you have to stop your refugees getting out. Now, 
Just because they don't speak English doesn't mean they're stupid. They have proven to be very resourceful getting out of places they don't want to be. So, simply nail some razor wire along the top of your compound. G'day. G'day, little mate. Hiya, fella. Lastly, get yourself a good, sturdy door. With as many locks as a budget will cater for. It's as simple as that. Turn your old chook run from this into this. Doesn't that look great? Now, here's Sigourney to tell us how to best use our backyard refugees around the house. Thanks, Todd. It's a relief to know that those lucky refugees have a roof over their heads. Now, here are some of the practical advantages of giving these exiled peoples a chance at a better life. Your refugees don't just help you with your domestic duties. They're also a renovator's delight. And the children just love helping mum and dad. You just miss the spot. And those little hands are fabulous at getting into those hard to reach places. Have you found that ring yet? Here, I'll just stir it up a bit for you. And most importantly, remember that these people are more than just refugees. They're human beings. And sometimes, nothing beats the quality of hand stitching. So why not rent your backyard refugees out to your neighbours and local businesses? That's lovely, darling. Only 4,900 more to go. They should go back to the country. Why are other countries not taking these refugees? Why only Australia? Why are they only land in Australia for? What for? It's the only democratic country in the world that imprison them and treat them really like criminals. They got nice telly, nice food, you know, nice bed. Yeah, just about, yeah, it's, Australia is too nice. They come for your help, you don't kick them away, tell them to get lost. That's what I think anyway. The way they treat it is really bad, really bad. They don't have any rights. There's a sign there, you can't take cameras, you can't take this and that. I guarantee, I mean, I, I believe they're in jail, no invitations. It's, it's not fair. Just like what we had in Hong Kong, Vietnamese people came in and they had riots and stuff, you know, complaining and protesting. My parents weren't born here, born here, but they gave them a hard time getting in and these days they're just letting them in by the thousands and thousands and I think it's really stupid. I think when you see a boatload coming across, send them back, start shooting at them, I don't know, whatever, but get them back out because they're just making too much trouble and costing us too much money. If you're like me and you like to bend society's fascist rules, then chances are you're going to get caught out every once in a while. So today I'm going to give you some legal advice. Tell you what to do if you ever have to go to court. You shouldn't be afraid of the legal system. Remember, you are innocent until proven guilty. And even then, there are lots of loopholes to let you get away with it. For example, there are these things called legal precedents. Precedents are great. Basically, if someone has a really good excuse and gets away with it, anybody coming in after that can point at their example and say, you should let me off for the same reason. The precedent I'm going to use in today's trial is the stolen generation. Miss Penny. You are charged with stealing one broad screen digital television. How do you plead? Not guilty, Your Honour. What do you have to say in your defence? I cite the precedent of the stolen generation, Your Honour. You see, I did not steal that television. I took it into care. The owners of the television did nothing active to prevent me from removing their television which I took as tacit acceptance that they were unable to look after the television properly themselves. Whereas I assure your honour, the television enjoyed a good home with me. Free as a bird. And I got to keep the telly. You see, there's no need to be scared of the legal system. There's always an excuse. And any excuse that's good enough for the federal government is good enough for me. Hello, Dr. Rudy here. You know, traditionally, you average Australians squander all your savings on food you throw away, shelter you can't afford, and education you don't use. 
Then you spend your retirement years living in a rented caravan and eating dog food. So tonight, I'm going to give you some investment advice that might just save your life savings. Where to begin? You could invest in shares, but how do you know which company to invest in? Unless you have the type of contacts I've built up through years of practicing proctology, you've got no chance of reaping the benefits of insider trading. You could get an investment property, but that means getting tenants. And once you let tenants loose, they do more damage to a property than a designer from changing rooms. You could invest in art, but would you really want something like this in your home? It would frighten your children and give them a distorted understanding of the female anatomy. For you average Australians, the safest place to invest your savings is the DAB. To place a bet, you don't need to worry about inside information or years of training in art appreciation. You just need to be able to count to four to make sure the horse has the requisite number of legs. Then hand your savings over to a friendly DAB cashier. The odds are never good. But unlike a stockbroker, a real estate agent or an art dealer, at least you can trust a horse. Well, Penny, life support's been part of our lives for five weeks now. That's right, Sigourney. And we've had a huge response from all of you out there. Yes, writing to us with your problems and queries, emailing us for those smart ideas and simple solutions. And after five weeks, I've got to say, please stop writing to us. We can't cope with all the letters we've received. That's right. We've had so many letters asking advice on so many problems that I'm starting to think that no one in this country can make a decision by themselves. Now, we love hearing about how you love the show, and it's always nice to receive marriage proposals. But until we deal with our current correspondence, please don't write to us. But we are here for you, and we don't want to leave you in the lurch. So here are some phone numbers of some other organisations that might be able to help you with your lifestyle. You might not get that life support warmth, but you may get that answer you've been searching for. Well, there's that problem solved. And doesn't it feel good? So let's solve another one. It's a strange quirk of science that when you add an ice cube to a bowl of salted water, it actually takes longer to melt. You see, the salt lowers the temperature of the ice, increasing the rate of freezing and slowing the rate of melting. A handy thing to know when summer comes around. Kids love nothing more than a cool, refreshing ice lolly on a hot summer's day. And thanks to science, by simply adding salt, you can create an ice treat that won't melt on them in minutes in the hot sun. Voila! A frozen treat to keep the kids cool. What do you think, Princess? It's salty. Yep. That's the magic of science, darling. Old folk can be a pain in the ass. So what do we do? We try to avoid them and ignore them until they end up in nursing homes just watching TV and playing cards. But you don't have to lock them away. Your oldies can be valuable assets and they can contribute to society even though they don't work. All they remember is the good old days and they kind of smell like cabbage and, and kerosene. Nobody wants to spend part of their day in an economically rationalised bank queue. So get an old relative to save your place for you leaving you free to shop, have coffee, or just hang out. Because your time is valuable. Theirs isn't. Once they're used to cues, tuck them up with a blanket and a hot water bottle and set them up for overnight sleep outs for the best concerts and sports tickets. And you can use their disabled sticker to park in the best spots. And once they get used to sitting in the car, let them bring some friends along. That way you can use three in a car transit lanes in peak hour traffic, and they'll just think they're going on an outing. There's lots of things you can do with oldies, and with the onset of Alzheimer's, they won't remember anything anyway. So give them a go. Make them feel useful again, and improve the quality of your own life. Okay, girls, have we all got our prescriptions? Good.
because they'll score you the best rocks. See ya! I think I bought you a drink. Thank you! I love getting free drinks. But how do you know what's in them? Increasingly, men are spiking drinks with date rape drugs, like GHB or gamma hydroxybutyric acid and rohypnol. But girls, you don't need to worry, because a group of clever people at Britain's Department of Trade and Industry have come up with a fabulous new invention. Yes, it's a cocktail stirrer, or swizzle stick, but one with a difference. You see, if there are any drugs in your drink, it changes colour. You simply stir your drink for a few seconds, and if the plastic changes from green to red, then you know. If he's willing to risk a year or two in prison, he must be really keen on you. It must be hard being a woman. Not at all. Women get to deal with men. It's much harder for men because we have to deal with women. Too true. In fact, I'd go so fast to say that modern women are very lucky. When my mother was a girl, she didn't have convenient drug testing devices to help her play the dating game. I guess that makes your dad the lucky one. What? But you fellas can make it easier on your lady friends. Like, when I have a woman over at my place, I set her mind at ease by letting her pour her own drink out of the cask. Todd, you're a regular sensitive new age guy. Oh, well, I wouldn't say I'm a snag. I prefer to think of myself as a snap. Snapped? Sensitive new age tradesman. Anyway, you better tell us about the next segment in the show. Well, it's Sigourney again, and she's talking about men again. Sigourney's always talking about men. Well, for Sigourney, the subject of men is far more important than anything they discuss at the United Nations. Mm. It's funny you should mention United Nations because they always turn a blind eye. And turning a blind eye is what Sigourney's next story is all about. <laughs> I hate it when you get one of these. Apart from the physical pain and the blurred vision, black eyes are just so embarrassing. All those prying questions and assumptions. And pity is not an emotion that defines the modern woman. So tonight, I'm going to show you how to beat the busybodies with some wonderful cover-up techniques that you'll love using time and time again. First of all, you'll need to anaesthetise the area so that you don't pass out from pain once you start touching it. So, if there's any alcohol left in the house, fix yourself a drink. Now you need to apply some concealer. Concealer is a wonderful product that's also good for disguising blemishes, or so I've been told. Now to apply this, you're going to need a wooden spoon. It'll stop you from screaming out if your anaesthetic isn't strong enough. Next, you need to add a nice thick layer of foundation. Then apply your normal eye makeup. Voila! You may look like the victim of a makeover gone wrong, but at least you don't look like the victim of domestic bliss gone wrong. Of course, makeup only works if it's a simple bruise. If your eye makes contact with something going at an angrier speed, you're going to get swelling. And once your eye swells up like a baboon's bottom, not even the scientists at the Pons Institute are going to be able to help you. That's when you need to accessorise with an eye patch. And the best thing about wearing an eye patch is you can have lots of fun inventing new excuses for why you're wearing one. Hi! Mwah, mwah. Oh my, what happened? Oh, this? So embarrassing. I watched a solar eclipse without looking through a hole in a tiny piece of paper. Man, he's very tired. He comes home very tired and everything. And plus, the wife, she comes and keeps nagging, nagging on the top of his head. That's why he gets regressive. A lot of girls do ask for it, though. I've seen some situations where... But it's more like guys that fight guys are kind of like in the same kind of weight range type thing most of the time. And like with a guy hitting a girl, it's too much. If they provoke it, they deserve it. You know, if it's just out of for no reason sort of thing, well, yeah, it's wrong. But... Some chicks can be very provoking in that way. They sort of ask for it, basically. My father just taught me one rule. If you hit, ever hit your wife, you've lost the respect forever. Of course, ladies, it's better to have nothing to hide. It's better to not get black eyes. 
So, next time there's an incoming object headed for your face, tilt your head back and cop it in the mouth. The Angelina Jolie look is all the rage this season. We all know the importance of a shed for the do-it-yourself home handyman. The shed is where a man gives birth to his dreams and aspirations. So what could be more satisfying as a do-it-yourself job than building your own shed? Well, tonight, that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, to help you people at home, I've chosen to use a kit shed. Now, don't feel embarrassed using a kit. It doesn't make you any less of a handyman. You've still got to put it together. But this kit does include all materials cut to length and comes complete with a set of instructions and the all-important Allen key. Now, this is a small shed but a big job. And sometimes it's just too hard to do a do-it-yourself job yourself. And when that happens, you should never be too proud to ask your neighbours for help. Look out, here's trouble. G'day, Jacob. Ezekiel. Caleb, how are you, champion? Oh, good, English. Ladies. All right, boys. We've got a shed to raise and an arvo to do it in. Let's get stuck in. Three o'clock in the morning. Run, get out of here, run. wonderful, so stoic, so plain, so unproud, which is why I enjoy spending time with them. I mean, where else could I feel so at home wearing an outfit that's mostly an apron? So practical. And you can take some time off from your search for Mr Wright. Let's face it, he's not going to be here. Top job by some top tradesmen. So take a tip from Todd and don't you be too proud. Sometimes it pays to have a little help around the house. Well, I can't believe it, but here we are at the end of another program. Yes, the end of our fifth show. As good a reason as any to jelly some pork. Mmm, it certainly looks wholesome. It's a traditional Amish dish. Oh, that's why there's so few Amish restaurants. Oh, and before we go, can I just do a big cheerio to my mates Ezekiel, Jacob and Caleb. Thanks for your help with the shed, fellas. You can do it, Todd, but I don't think they'll hear it. What on television, Todd? The Amish don't have them. Oh, right. And remember, stop sending us those letters because we're overloaded with your problems and concerns. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia.